Okay, on the next uh, segment now, we are talking to uh, Patrick Meehan, a National Fire Chiefs Council lead for carbon monoxide safety. And our talking point today is carbon monoxide, as it's carbon monoxide safety week. Welcome, Patrick, to the show. It's great to have you on. Thank you. And um, my first question, I'm going to dive straight in. Carbon monoxide, what is it used for, please? What is it used for? Yeah, carbon monoxide. Right, I say carbon monoxide, um, it's it's a byproduct of incomplete combustion. So basically, um, if you've got a, so by incomplete combustion, if you've got a faulty gas fire boiler, oil-fired boiler or a log burner, anything that burns fuel, uh, if it's faulty and it's not burning correctly, um, with, you'll get incomplete combustion. And by that, uh, with incomplete combustion, it will give off carbon monoxide. Now, carbon monoxide, you can't see it, taste it or smell it. It's extremely dangerous. So in, in close spaces, if you get high exposure to it, it can kill you in minutes. Yeah. Um, or it can make you really, really ill. Sure. And um, as you say, uh, people often say it's known as a silent killer. Yeah. OK, um, my next question I'm going to ask you, how long does it take to get carbon monoxide poisoning? And what steps should one do take if they do get carbon monoxide poisoning? So you can get carbon monoxide poisoning within minutes and, and it's different degrees. So you can have low level exposure. Uh, so low level, low level exposure, um, you can just feel generally unwell uh, over long periods of time uh, and not quite able to put your finger on it. Um, and you should go and see, you know, go and see a doctor, uh, a medical practitioner. But if you're so the one way to probably narrow it down slightly on long term exposure and probably uh, acute exposure is if you're feeling ill when you're at home or in one particular room and and when you you leave you go to work you go on holiday or you're out the house shopping you feel a bit better um because basically you, you'll start to recover quite quickly um you, it will give you a warning sign that possibly there is a problem in that property um and also if you've got more than one person in your family or a pet that have got the same symptoms at the same time it's highly unlikely uh you're gonna have a cold or the flu exactly the same time so that should be a little warning sign so if you're feeling unwell um, and you think it might be carbon monoxide, the first thing to do, take some medical advice, um, turn that appliance off, get an engineer out, get that appliance checked. So if you, what you need to have is a carbon monoxide detector. So what we like is to have the first line of defence, get your appliance, your boiler, fire, serviced every 12 months by a reputable engineer. Um, then have a, a carbon monoxide alarm, a quality one. They only cost about 15 to 20 quid. They're available all over the place, DIY shops, supermarkets, online. Get one of those, make sure it's fitted and in the correct place. And basically, if there is carbon monoxide present, that will confirm it. So if that goes off, you know you've been exposed to carbon monoxide poisoning. And what you need to then is go to see a GP or go to A&E and tell them, relate it back to the alarm going off and at least they'll know where to start looking then because it's really difficult to diagnose because it can be confused with all these common symptoms even COVID-19. You won't get a high temperature with uh, carbon monoxide but uh, you'll get other similar symptoms. So the the main thing is to get checked. So you said um, how long does it take? So if you're in a property and you so this time of year it's really cold. I had to scrape my my, uh, car windscreen this morning. So People have got the doors and windows shut. You, some boilers will have an air vent which serves that boiler. Some people have blocked them up because they won't understand that's what it's for. Now, by get, not getting the air to the boiler or the chimney might be blocked because you haven't had it serviced and checked, you can have severe carbon monoxide leak. And if you get a high dosage of high carbon monoxide leak in a short period of time, um, it can kill in minutes. So it can be literally from that to a long-term yeah. Uh, exposure right so it's very quick thank you for explaining you. that I've got some statistics from project shout uh, revealed that over one third 35 percent of people wouldn't recognize the symptoms of um co poisoning at all um also done a little bit of research myself i i asked uh, um a dozen people um have they got to carbon monoxide fitted in their home and nearly quarter percent of people said they do not have a carbon monoxide alarm in their home are they worrying figures? They are worrying figures. And I think it's up to us um, to get that message out. Media, NFCC, um, industry, people in the gas industry, it's up to us to get that message out. 
So we need to educate people. So I think because of COVID-19, understandably, most people understand it now. We, we understand about social distancing. We understand about how it spreads. I don't think there's enough public awareness that people understand about carbon oxide poisoning, where it comes from, the importance of having a carbon oxide detector. I think we all understand about the importance of having a smoke alarm. We know that saves your life. It virtually does exactly the same job as that, except it detects carbon monoxide. So you could, if you get one, um, so we need to make sure everyone knows, know why you need one. Uh, they know the importance of getting of gas appliances and other boilers and, and log burners getting checked once a year, getting your chimneys checked. We need to make sure everyone knows that message and they know it's very important to get your boiler service, fire service and get a quality carbon monoxide alarm. And that is up to us as uh, public the, the um, industry and public services to make sure that message gets out and we educate people. And got some more stats here. Approximately 50 people die each year from carbon monoxide poisoning and thousands more treated in hospital. Um, on to this one, testing the alarm. 80% of residents in properties that do have an alarm admit they have no idea whether it works or not um, as they never test it. Yeah, so carbon monoxide alarms, they've come on massively over recent years. And most of them now, a decent quality one will be a, a sealed battery unit. So they last about seven years. So the reason for that is the sensors which sense the carbon monoxide, the life or the, the, the life, lifetime of that is seven years. So the battery is coincided to do that. So basically, we, we'd like you to uh, test your carbon monoxide alarm every week. When you take your smoke alarms, it's a great time. It takes seconds to do. So by testing it, you know the battery's working, you know the sensor's working. Now, if you know that's working and it doesn't go off and it's in the if it's situated in the right place, as in near to one and three metres away from your gas fire boiler or where you're, you're sleeping, basically, if that goes off, you know there's an issue and then you, you seek medical advice and get an expert out to check your appliance. If it doesn't go off and you've had your boiler serviced and you know you test it, you're safe, aren't you? Yeah. It, it, it'll give you peace of mind yeah. and you'll know you and your family as safe as you can make them. Yeah, sure. And on the smoke alarm itself, it's measured uh, when it's reset on three zeros. What is the um, what is it measured in um, on the device and what a level on that device is dangerous? Uh, so it's parts per million of carbon monoxide and it's uh, 30 parts per million it will go off at. Right. Okay. So if, if it's going off at 30 parts per million, that means you need to get out of that room. OK, so if you if you're exposed to that dosage of um, carbon monoxide for any for a long period of time, you, your life's in risk and your health is definitely in danger. So, um, yeah, it's part of a million. It's probably so your gas engineer will understand that. So when you get a gas engineer out and an oil fire engineer, the base, they'll come out and they have a car, they have a gas monitor. And they stick a little sensor in the flue and that will give you parts per million. So part of your service, they're going, look, that's safe. It's so many parts per million because there is a, a permissible amount because um, a lot of it will just dissipate in the air. So as, after a certain amount, it's not safe. So if it's going off, you said definitely get out of yeah. the house. If it's not going off, you know you're fairly safe. So when, when, the, it, al sorry, when the alarm goes off, is it kind of in short abandoned ship do you, do you open any windows at all is it just best to vacate the property right for me i would like you to get out and stay out um so um so yeah get out stay out uh so turn off the appliance if you can if you've got time if it's not going to take you ages turn off the appliance ventilate open the doors and windows get out is the most important thing call the gas emergency number which is 0800 111 and uh, if it is a gas appliance or get an engineer out, if it's a different type of appliance, seek medical advice, definitely. Um, can I just cover, a, um, so we, we mentioned smoke detectors for yeah. a short while. I just want to clarify, smoke detectors, um, you do need a smoke detector, but carbon monoxide alarm, it's a totally different device. So we need to make sure we got both. Uh, but yeah, with, with the, if one activates, make sure you come out of the property. Uh, that is my main advice. Um, your, your experts can come along, fire service can come along and they can ventilate. We wear breathing apparatus in the fire service. We won't breathe that in. Um, so, yeah, get out of the property. 
Sure, and my final talking point briefly is on in October 2015, law came into force that required private landlords to fit carbon monoxide alarms in every property that had a solid fuel burning appliance such as open fire log burner. Um, this law, however, does not cover gas appliances such as a gas boiler or gas hob, uh, something Project Shout is uh, campaigning to change. Yeah, so good timing that is because uh, there's a public consultation out at the moment uh, and it's been sent to industry um, to basically to feedback. So there's a look at a, a change in legislation. So for me personally, I, I would like to be where Scotland is. So Scotland, it was February 2021, looks like going to be 2022 now because of COVID, everything's been put back a bit. In Scotland, every property is going to have to have a carbon oxide alarm where there's a fuel burn appliance and, in more impo and importantly as well, a flu. So where there's a flu going through a bedroom, you should have a carbon monoxide detector because carbon monoxide can seep from one room to another or a property to another. So in England, um, you're right, at the moment, it's just where a solid fuel appliance is fitted and uh, where landlords have a solid fuel appliance fitted, they should have a carbon monoxide detector. So legislation has been looked at at the moment, public consultation, where it's looking to go to every um cover every appliance apart from a gas cook sorry apart from a cooking appliance so every appliance and all fuel types in all rented accommodation and that's been looked at at the moment so hopefully i'd like to see more than that but hopefully in the future uh, that'll make us all a lot safer right uh, patrick meehan uh, national fire chiefs council lead for carbon monoxide safety on uh, today's uh, show with danny uh, talking point to carbon monoxide safety week's been uh, delight to have you on Thank you, Danny. Okay, great stuff. All right.